The prophet came to David and said, what would you do if a family had a little bitty lamb? And they loved the lamb. The lamb was like their family. And a mighty ruler with more sheep and cattle and lamb than anybody in the land came and took that lamb from that family. What would you do? He said, bring him to me. The prophet looked at him and said, thou art the man. And he repented. He wrote the psalm of repentance. Create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. Watch this. She gives birth, Bathsheba, to this child. The Bible never mentions the child's name. The child is on the brink of death. David fasts and he prays, God, please let my baby live. And the child dies. But you have to understand, with all the scriptures that we've looked at, that if this child would have lived, then God's word would have been negated over David's life. Because he would have started the 10-year cycle of a bastard child. Oh, God, did y'all catch that? The temple would never be built by his firstborn son. And the promise of God would be negated. There's some things that God has over your life. There are some things that God wants to do in your life. And you're trying to hold on to relationships. You're trying to hold on to people that mean you no good. Let me tell you something. There's some stuff God's going to cut off of your life because he won't allow you to mess this one up. Grab your neighbor and say, neighbor, God in 2013, he's not going to let you mess this thing up. There's some stuff you love, but God's going to let it die before he negates the word over your life. Grab somebody and tell them, say, my prophecy will come to pass. And whatever God has to cut out, whatever God has to cut off, God, I want you to do it. I'm not going to pray for it to live. I don't want to be with somebody that don't have purpose. I don't want to be connected to a job that's a dead end job. I want to be connected to the prophecy over my life. High five your neighbor and say neighbor, you can't mess this one up. You can't. You messed it up in the past. You made mistakes in the past. But from this day forward God's not going to let you mess the dream up over your life. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. As I close this baby dies. David gets up and he cleans himself, goes back to Bathsheba. Now she's his wife, goes into Bathsheba. She gets pregnant with Solomon and the child of promise is born. Grab your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm pregnant with a promise. I've been through some struggles in my life. I've been down and out in some situations. God had to let some things down that were connected to me. God had to release me from situations from my past. But in 2013, I'm tired of being locked out. I'm tired of wandering around in the wilderness. 2013, I'm going into my promise. 2013, I'm walking in my destiny. High five three people and tell them, say, neighbor, this is my year to walk in my dream. Whatever God has to remove, whatever God has to shake, God, I want you to shake it loose. I want you to cut it off. I only want what you have for me. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. High five somebody and tell them, say, neighbor, let's go in. As I get ready to close here, the back. The Bible said in Psalm 66 and 12, thou has caused me to run over our heads. The literal translation means you've caused men to step down on top of us. How many of you are tired of people stepping on you? How many of you are tired of people stepping over you? Grab somebody and tell them, say, neighbor, I'm tired of folks stepping on me. This is my year. This is my season. That I'm going to get up from under this pile and walk into my destiny. Shout it. He said, thou has caused me to run over our heads. We've been through the fire, but we didn't get burned. We've been through the water, but we didn't
drowned and now you have brought us out but I'm tired of coming out and going back in this time I'm coming out and I'm going in to my promise grab three people and shake their hand and tell them say neighbor I'm going in into my miracle into my healing into my deliverance into my change you ought to give somebody a pull and tell them let's go in shout it shout it shout it yeah. this side don't want to get with me let me preach to this side over here they don't want to get y'all want this word high five your neighbor and say neighbor neighbor. I'm tired of being down. I'm tired of barely making it. I'm coming out, but I'm going in into my hill, into my turnaround, into my breakthrough. Somebody lift up your hands. Where you at, balcony? Lift up your hands. Open up your mouth and shout out. I'm going in. I'm going in. Shout it Lean on somebody and tell them, say, let's go in. Let's go in. I'm coming out of sickness. I'm coming out of bondage. I'm coming out of death. And I'm walking in divine healing. I'm walking in divine prosperity. Total family blessing is over my life. Why? Because I'm going in. I'm going in. Now listen, in the old church. Oh, Lord when you would have a good service when you would shout the house down they would say today we went in and the reason why is because what gives me access into my next level is my praise I'm going to praise them on credit I got a prophetic shout I got a prophetic praise that says I'm walking in and I got some praisers that are ready to say welcome to the next level you ought to shout your way in you ought to holler your way in now come on give him praise Give it pride. Give God a praise right where you are. 